Russia has created an air fighter that is unbeatable. Throughout the evolution of fighter jets, no nation has ever developed a fighter so large that its sheer size intimidates its rivals. This aircraft does not just dominate the sky, it owns the celestial sphere. With its exceptional speed and destructive armaments, this aircraft can cause destruction that is as huge as its size. Is this air fighter truly the largest in the world? What are the capabilities of this technological marvel? Join us as we explore that mass of the largest aircraft in the world that Putin just revealed. You're probably wondering why the United States has not created an air fighter of this magnitude. We'll get into the details. But first, let's acknowledge and appreciate the very first nation to develop something this magnificent, Russia. This nation is known to, to maintain the world's largest stockpile of nuclear weapons and possesses the world's second largest fleet of ballistic missile submarines. They are also one of the only three nations alongside the United States and China to operate a strategic bomber. Now this nation has ushered in another achievement, the largest aircraft ever built. This aircraft known as the Aleutian 276, or Candid, is a big aircraft that is powered with four engines. It was made by a Russian design group in 1967 to carry lots of stuff to places that are hard to reach. People use military versions of this aircraft in different parts of the world for things like refueling other planes or controlling operations from the sky. This aircraft has been a very important part of the Russian Air Force since the 1970s. They've started making a new version 20 years after the initial one. This aircraft is efficient in several duties like carrying things, refueling other planes, giving early warnings, and delivering cargo. Pyotr Butowski explained that back in 1966, Sergei Ilyushin and his team were instructed to design a plan with some certain characteristics which was different from the regular planes. This requirement was the aircraft's ability to carry heavy things over long distances. But that's not all. They needed the plane to have the ability to take off from runways without causing any form of damage to the aircraft. Using the United States Lockheed C-141A Starlifter from 1963, they designed the first prototype CCCP-86712, which took off on March 25, 1971, with Eduard Kuznetsov in the cockpit. It showed up at the Paris Air Show two months later. The first mass-produced IL-76 flew on May 8, 1973, made in Tashkent, Uzbekistan, and they eventually produced about 80 of the original version. In 1978, they started making a new variant, the IL-76M, with a stronger structure and bigger fuel tanks. They made it heavier and able to carry more stuff. This variant has been used for extensive service as a commercial freighter for ramp-delivered cargo, especially for outsized or heavy items that cannot be carried by other aircraft. It has also been used as an emergency response transport for civilian evacuations as well as for humanitarian aid and disaster relief around the world. Thanks to its ability to operate from unpaved runways, it has been useful in undeveloped areas. Other specialized models have also been produced for aerial firefighting and zero-g training. Before exploring the details of the specialized models, let's check out the original design of this magnificent aircraft. Back in 1967, Ilyushin planned on making a plan that had the ability to carry 40 tons of stuff over long distances quickly, even landing on short or rough runways and handling harsh weather. This aircraft was being designed to replace another plane called the Antonov-12. Ilyushin also planned to make a bigger plane for 250 passengers, but that idea got scrapped. They focused their resources in creating the aircraft from their designs, and eventually, the plane had its first flight in March 1961. These planes were made in Tashkent, Uzbekistan, which was part of the Soviet Union at the time. They made around 860 of the basic versions, in the 1990s, they made newer versions with bigger cargo spaces and different engines, but not many were made because the Russian Air Force, who mostly used these aircraft, had money problems. Starting in 2004, many planes that were being used commercially were upgraded to a newer version called IL-7690VD. This upgrade included using a new engine called the PS90 to meet noise rules in Europe. Also in 2005, China ordered 34 new IL-76MD planes and four IL tankers. Then in June 2013, 
Russia's military export agency mentioned that China ordered additional 12 more of this cargo planes. Since then, the IL-76 plane has been changed to do different jobs. One version, called the IL-78, is used to refuel other planes while flying. They made about 50 of these. Another type of the IL-76 is used to drop water on fires from the air. The design of this aircraft was used to make a plane called the Beriev A-50, which is used for early warning and control in the air, and about 25 of these were made. This exceptional aircraft was used for flights to Antarctica and to train astronauts to float in space, like NASA's Vomit Comet. There was also a secret project to build two planes called the A-60, which were used for testing lasers while flying, but not much is known about it. In 2010, they announced they would make a newer version of the IL-76 called the IL-76MD-90A. They plan to build it in Ulyanovsk, Russia, in a factory called Aviastar, along with help from the Tashkent Works. They also proceeded to make two prototypes of this new version in Ulyanovsk. After oh, not so long production process, the first one was shown to the public on June 16, 2014. In April 2015, the Russian Aerospace Forces received their first version of the IL-760MD-90A from a contract for 39 planes. The Russian Ministry of Defense got its first one for regular use on April 2, 2019. By late 2023, they had ordered 27 of these planes to be delivered by 2028, and 20 had already been made, with six in 2023 alone. Now to the specification of this freighter. It flies up to 850 kilometers per hour max and around 750 to 800 kilometers per hour normally, covering a distance of 6,700 kilometers with extra fuel or 5,000 kilometers with 40 tons. The variant IL-76TD has similar speeds, flying 3,650 kilometers with full load or 7,300 kilometers with 20 tons. The IL-76MF cruises at 760 to 780 kilometers per hour, traveling 5,200 kilometers with 40 tons. The maximum takeoff weights for the variants is 170,000 kilogram for IL-76T, 190,000 kilograms for IL-76TD, and 200,000 kg for IL-76MF. Dimensions include a wingspan of 50.5 meters, length of 46.5 meters, and height of 14.76 meters. IL-76MF's length is about 53 meters. It accommodates a crew of five and two freight handlers, with a firefighting version capable of carrying 44 tons of fire retardant. Over 900 units of 276 have been produced, mostly for the Russian military, with around 300 used by civilian airlines like Aeroflot. The civilian version of this aircraft, called the IL-76T, which stands for transport, was made without military equipment in the tail gun. Removing these made the plane able to carry more weight up to 110,000 pounds, which is about 50,000 kilograms. Around 170 of the IL-76M-T planes were built until 1981, when the factory started making military IL-76MD and civilian IL-76TD, where the D stands for long range. They made the wings stronger and increased the maximum weight, allowing more fuel without reducing payload. With a load of 44,000 pounds, the range increased from over 4,000 miles to 4,598 miles. NATO called the civilian version Candid A and the military version Candid B. The IL-76MD can carry up to 105,800 pounds of cargo in a pressurized cargo area. Inside, it can fit 167 troops or 245 with an extra deck. Alternatively, it can carry 126 paratroopers who jump out from the back hatch or side doors. It can drop military gear from high or low altitudes. The plane is designed to take off and land on rough runways with wings that help lift it up in a landing gear made of multiple wheels. The military version of the plane has special equipment for navigation and radar. It uses radar under the nose for navigation and as a sight for dropping parachutists. Some military planes also have radar warning receivers and electronic jammers. They may also have devices to distract enemy radar and missiles. Most military planes and some civilian ones have a turret at the back with two cannons and radar. The plane can also carry bombs to light up the landing area or for training. Since we're acknowledging Russia's Air Force achievements, let's check out the Sukhoi Su-57. 
a stealth fighter that was developed in Russia. The Sukhoi Su-57, also known as Felon by NATO, is a stealth multi-role fighter jet that is powered with two engines and was developed by the aviation company Sukhoi. It came from the PAC-FA program, started in 1999 to create a modern and more affordable option than the MFI. This air fighter is notable for being the first Russian military aircraft built with stealth technology, and it is planned to be the lead model for a range of stealth combat aircraft. It is designed to handle air fights as well as attacks on ground and sea targets. Features that make this aircraft stand out are its stealth capabilities, exceptional agility, the ability to fly at supersonic speeds without afterburners, advanced integrated electronics, and can carry a large amount of weapons. It is expected to replace the MiG-29 and Su-27 in Russian service and is also being offered to other countries. The first prototype had its very first flight in 2010, but the development has been slow due to various issues, including a crash that destroyed the first production aircraft before it was delivered. However, after several delays, the first Su-57 was officially added to the Russian Aerospace Forces in December 2020. How did they come about the development of this stealth fighter? In 1979, the Soviet Union recognized the need for a new generation of fighter jets that would be ready by the 1990s. This project, which was called I-90, aimed to develop a versatile multi-role fighter that could handle ground attacks and replace older fighters like the MiG-29 and Su-27. To fulfill this goal, two different projects emerged. The MFI, meaning Multifunctional Frontline Fighter, and the smaller LFI, which stood for Light Fighter. Eventually, Mikoyan was chosen to develop the MFI, and they started work on the aircraft. Although not officially part of the MFI, Sukhoi began a parallel initiative in 1983, which led to the creation of the forward-swept wing S-32, later known as the S-37 and then Su-47. Sukhoi made use of existing aircraft, like the Su-47, to test the internal weapon bays and Su-27EM prototypes for flight control systems and engines. To minimize development risks and costs, technologies such as propulsion and certain avionics from the T-50 were also implemented into an advanced version of the Su-27 called the T-10BM, which later entered service as the Su-35s in 2014. Later on, the conceptual design of the T-50 was finalized and approved by the Ministry of Defense in December 2004, with significant government funding starting in 2005. The construction of the first prototypes for flight testing was announced to begin in 2007, and by 2009, the aircraft's design was officially approved. The T-50 was later named the Su-57 in July 2017. Now to the specification. As mentioned earlier, this aircraft is a highly advanced fifth-generation multi-role fighter jet, marking Russia's first operational stealth aircraft. It offers superior stealth features, extremely agile flight capabilities across all directions, large internal weapon bays for carrying various armaments, and sophisticated sensors like active phased array radar. These systems work together to automate many of the aircraft's functions. In designing the Su-57, Sukhoi aimed to improve upon certain limitations observed in the Lockheed Martin F-22. These included enhancing the aircraft's ability to perform combat roles beyond just air-to-air -air engagements, addressing the F-22's limited internal weapon storage, which focused primarily on missiles, and refining recovery techniques after stalls when thrust vectoring might not be available. It has a broad aerodynamically blended body with two engines set far apart, and features all moving control surfaces for better stealth and agility. It includes thrust vectoring and large wing root extensions that increase maneuverability by making the aircraft less inherently stable. These wing extensions can be adjusted to manage airflow over the wings, aiding in maintaining control and recovering quickly from stalls. For braking in the air, it uses its control surfaces to increase drag effectively. While the aircraft uses mainly alloy materials in its construction, it also incorporates a significant amount of composites which contribute to both the structure's weight efficiency and its stealth capabilities. As a multi-role fighter, the Su-57 can carry a variety of weapons internally, avoiding the drag associated with external armaments and maintaining its stealth profile. The weapons are stored in two large central bays and smaller side bays near the wings. 
The aircraft's design allows for extreme maneuvers and high angles of attack, supported by its advanced flight control system and thrust vectoring capabilities. It can fly at speeds of up to Mach 2 and can cruise at supersonic speeds without needing afterburners, which is a feature known as supercruise. This feature enhances missile range and fuel efficiency. Its design gives it a long supersonic range and the ability to further extend its range via in-flight refueling. The Su-57 is Russia's first operational stealth fighter, designed to minimize its visibility to radar. Like other stealth aircraft, such as the United States Raptor, the Su-57 features aligned edges and specially angled surfaces to scatter radar waves and reduce its radar cross-section. Its weapons are stored internally, and its antennas are set into the aircraft's surface to maintain a stealthy profile. The plane also uses radar-absorbent material to absorb radar signals and minimize reflection back to the source. The aircraft's engine intakes are designed to hide the engines from radar, with ram-coated walls and design features that conceal most of the engine face. The canopy is treated with metal oxide to absorb radar waves, reduce radar return by 30%, and protect the pilot from ultraviolet and thermal radiation. The production of this air fighter also involves tighter manufacturing tolerances than previous Russian fighters to improve stealth capabilities. This simply means that the design features of the Su-57, including its airframe shape and the use of RAM, have greatly reduced its RCS compared to the Su-27. It focuses on frontal stealth, optimizing features mainly in the forward direction, which aligns with Russian military tactics of operating within protected airspace. The stealth is most effective against high-frequency radars typically used by other aircraft. However, its large size means it can still be detected by lower-frequency radars used for weather and early warning, which are less precise and more prone to interference. This aircraft is powered by AL-41F1 engines, which are an advanced version of the engines used in earlier fighters like the Su-35S. These engines are integrated with the aircraft's flight control system to enhance maneuverability. The plane uses thrust vector control to allow agile movements in all directions. An updated engine model called the ISDALI-30 is planned to further enhance performance and reduce radar and infrared signatures. For armaments, it features large internal weapon bays that can carry a variety of missiles and bombs designed to be stealthy and efficient. It also has an internal autocannon for close combat. The aircraft can carry additional weapons on external hardpoints for missions where stealth is less critical. The Su-57 has a modern glass cockpit, which means it uses digital screens instead of traditional analog gauges. The cockpit includes two large 15-inch multifunctional LCD displays similar to those found in the Su-35s, supplemented by a smaller display and a digital control panel. A wide-angle head-up display projects important flight information in front of the pilot. The main controls include a joystick and a pair of throttles, and the aircraft is designed so that all major functions can be controlled without removing hands from these controls, a system known as HOTAS, or hands on throttle and stick. The cockpit canopy consists of two parts, with the back section sliding forward to close, and it is coated with a special metallized material to help reduce the plane's radar visibility. The aircraft uses advanced computers to manage various functions and systems. The Su-57 is equipped with the NPP Zvezda K36 D5 ejection seat and the Soji High 50 life support system, which provides oxygen and protection against high Joe G forces, allowing the pilot to withstand up to nine Gs for brief periods. The pilot wears a ZSH-10B helmet that includes a digital display system which tracks the pilot's eye movements to help aim weapons and manage systems without manual input. For avionics, it integrates various advanced systems to enhance pilot awareness and reduce workload, such as the SHET-121 multifunctional radio electronic system and the 101KS Atoll suite of electro-optical sensors. These systems include advanced radar, electronic countermeasures, and infrared and ultraviolet sensors that help detect and track targets and threats. The aircraft features a unique radar setup with a main forward-facing AAS radar and additional radars on the sides of the fuselage for greater coverage. It also includes electronic countermeasures and systems for encrypted communication and data exchange with other units. 
The Su-57 uses an inertial navigation system that integrates with GLONASS for precise positioning. The aircraft is also testing new technologies that could be used in future fighters, including artificial intelligence and systems for managing health and maintenance of its structure. These two unique technologies stand as proof that Russia is determined and would not spare any cost in remaining technologically advanced and being several steps ahead of its adversaries. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.